Molly, Rosie, thanks very much indeed for joining me. You're the hosts of Soccer X. How yes. have you enjoyed the experience so far? Oh, it's been incredible, you know, and to be here just feels like such a powerful moment mm, for us. It does. It feels a little bit surreal, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. It does. I mean, it's our first ever Soccer X event and for our first ever time to attend Soccer X, to be actually hosting the event, mm. feels like a big moment. And Absolutely. Yeah, you know, we're really proud. We were really proud this morning to stand up there and introduce the event and be in front of so many industry leaders. Mm. Um, yeah, really excited to have joined the team. Massively. I think, you know, for from a personal level, it's like our two worlds coming together, right? Obviously, soccer, football <laughs> um, has changed our lives and has been the pinnacle of our, um, I suppose, the centre of our universe, let's say, um, in terms of when we were little girls to now. Uh, so we've seen the impact that football has been able to have on our own lives. And then obviously, business side of, of things with the powerhouse projects and what we're doing now, two worlds collide and we're able to host. That's absolutely brilliant for us. Okay, key question. What is scarier, walking out onto a football field or walking out onto a stage? <laughs> oh, the stage. The stage, yes. yeah. Well, you know, you've got to think, since we could kick the ball, that was where we were most comfortable, right? So football for us, I could do it with my eyes closed. That is where we have been most natural. Whereas broadcasting was something that we had to really lean into and develop skills for. Um, and we're still learning, we're still developing. Um, so yeah, I would say definitely the stage is a lot more <laughs> nerve wracking. <laughs> Yeah, 100%, I agree. And you'd never think you'd say that. You know, no. I think when you're playing football, you think, oh, getting on stage, that's easy. Yeah. It's hard. Um, and it definitely requires a different set of skills. So, mm. yeah, it, it's been a, a, a good journey for us to have both. Just tell us a bit about that journey, the transition from playing into broadcasting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think for us, um, playing, you know, is always going to have a sell-by date. Um, and I think for us personally, we saw where women's football was going in the UK. Um, and to retire at the age we retired at, I think like 24, 25 years old, it's a really difficult decision because you definitely can still play at mm -hmm. those ages. But um, to see that actually the impact that we could potentially make off the pitch and be those role models on the TV screens or in social media that we definitely lacked growing up. We knew that long term that would make much more impact than us staying on the pitch and playing ourselves. So as individuals, we maybe would have gained so much more um, from a playing perspective, but actually the impact you can make for yourself and others is mm. much greater from a broadcasting and TV perspective. So yeah, I'm really proud of that decision. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it, it wasn't easy, you know, Ben. Honestly, <laughs> it was it was really difficult, you know, growing up and being footballers, that becomes your identity, to be honest, and that's all you know. So when you make the decision to step away, you're now, you're, you're now figuring out who you are mm. away from the game. And that is a very, very difficult process to go through. I think we struggled for a solid two years mm. until we found our feet with presenting. Um, but yeah, but well, we're very happy to be here. I feel like we're very comfortable now in front of uh, screen and on stage. I very much hope so anyway. Um, so yeah, uh, it's been a very, very difficult transition, but one that I, I wouldn't change for a minute. People may wrongly assume that because you're twins, you make a lot of decisions together. Maybe that's true for certain <laughs> things, but with the retirement and the transition into broadcasting, was that a joint decision or was it almost just coincidence that it happened about the same time? <laughs> oh, Molly, go on, tell the story. <laughs> tell the story. Um, I definitely had the realisation and I definitely wanted to make the move before Rosie. And I think being a twin your whole life, you feel like you have to make these decisions and these life choices together. And for once in my life, um, I felt like I wanted something different to Rosie. So I had to listen to that. Um, so, you know, maybe a, a season before Rosie retired, two seasons actually before Rosie retired, I said, you know what, I I'm done. I don't feel what I should feel from football anymore. I feel like I need to go and explore this passion that I know I have in broadcasting. Um, so I'm going to go and do that. So it's the first time in 25 years at the time that we had done something differently. Um, so I think it was a shock for me. It was a shock for Rosie, a shock for our family. Because they're like, what are you doing? You're twins. You've got to do everything yeah. together. And I'm like, yeah. no, no, I don't. So I made the decision and I said to Rosie, look, I think you'll be mad to not do this with me. Um, and she didn't. She stuck to her gun. She stayed playing football for another two seasons. And then she sat me down and said... Oh, you're right. I think I'm going to stop playing too. I just didn't um, want to be told so what to I, do. I was the trendsetter there. I was the trendsetter. Um, and she uh, soon followed suit. Yeah. 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 Um, I think, you know, that story, it just proves that I, I was struggling to leave football, if I'm being completely honest. Those two years, I was 
I was trying to get my head around what my life would look like away from the game and I was struggling to come to terms with the fact that I weren't going to be playing anymore and what life would look like for me after after quitting. Um, so yeah, it just took me a lot longer and to be honest, the transition was made a lot easier because Molly had already led the the way a little bit in terms of broadcasting and getting us in front of certain organisations. Um, so actually I have a lot to thank wow, you for. Wow, it's the first time she's ever said that, <laughs> you're so welcome. <laughs> The game that you retired from, even though, of course, you're still working within it, has moved quite some distance rapidly mm. over the course of the last three or four years. What positive trends have you seen in the women's game now mm. that maybe weren't apparent at the point when you chose to retire? Mm. I think the stigma around the game is the biggest change that I've seen. Like when we were growing up playing football, there was a huge stigma attached to women's football statements like you're not good enough to play they're not physical enough they're not quick enough they're not skillful enough it's not an entertaining product to watch right it's not until you change those narratives or you prove people wrong is when you get eyes uh, wanting to watch whereas like right now and the, the landscape of the game we're no longer changing those stigmas or the narratives people understand that the product is so brilliant to watch um, and i think that's where it's so exciting because we're no longer working backwards. The foundation's built and now hopefully, you know, the, uh, the rise just continues. Yeah, definitely. I think, you know, attendances and mm. numbers of eyes watching the game when we were growing up was definitely different <laughs> to what we see now. And thank God it's different because, you know, we we're playing for Tottenham Hotspur, one of the biggest clubs in the world. And you know, you're playing there for nine years and you're playing in front of crowds of, I don't know, let's say 100 max, a big game, 100. Now, that's a very different number, you know, thousands and you're selling out stadiums and, you know, you're playing at Tottenham Hotspur's men's stadium and, you know, that's how it should be. And I think for us, the um, records that women's football continues to break is what we want to see happen and that's why we make the decisions to retire early because you want to be a part of change and you want to be the reason that a young girl sees herself in you so how can we go through this game that we love so much and not try and make the difference as we get older um, we'd be doing the game and injustice and ourselves so i'm glad we've made the decisions and i'm so glad now that we no longer fight the battles that um, we have had to growing up and if we compare for example wsl or women's football even in Europe a bit more broadly with NWSL. What do you make of where the WSL is at? And what are your thoughts on football in North America? Because I feel like maybe five years ago, certainly 10 years ago, NWSL was the place where everyone mm. wanted to be. But now perhaps we're seeing a bit more of a gravitation towards some of the European leagues. Mm -hmm. Oh, definitely. And I think even the narrative for us growing up, wow, the only way you could make it in our heads growing up, move to America. And that's what we've done. Yes. 18 years old, we got on a plane to Florida um, and we studied at St. Leo University and we signed a four year scholarship. And that for us was, yes, we're going to make it. Um, you know, we actually ended up coming home after nine months. There was reasons we needed to come home, personal reasons. Um, but it was a really sad moment because when your whole life you've settled on the fact that the only way to make it in this sport that you love is to go to America and then you don't end up staying there for the time you feel like you failed mm. so actually to see that narrative change over the years to now say actually you in my opinion the WSL in the UK is the is the league to be in that's the place to be and actually that never used to be the conversation you had to feel like as an English based player you better move to America if you want to make it in this game so to know now that we can have homegrown talent and we can have a league where people want to come to us from all over the world you feel like you're in a powerful position and you feel like actually we've witnessed the change you have lived through and played through the transition in women's football in the UK and it is a really powerful position to be in and a really um, inspiring journey to have witnessed. Beautiful, beautiful you put more. Beautiful oh, thank, you put. thank you Rosie, <laughs> full of compliments today. There we go, the twins on this occasion have got the same words and therefore yeah. one answer fits all. Uh, talking about the WSL, just briefly I'd be remiss if I don't ask you about the season that we're seeing which looks like being a very competitive one who's going to win the WSL title oh. Oh. always throws a spanner in Ben doesn't yeah. he <laughs> Arsenal wow okay do you know what I would have said someone different to Chelsea 
if Emma Hayes hadn't announced that she was leaving. I think that Chelsea will want to do it for her more than ever. Um, so I think Chelsea will want to stay on top. And it looks like Emma Hayes will be confirmed as the new US women's national team <laughs> manager. She's not leaving Chelsea officially until May. That's a huge appointment, mm -hmm. isn't it, for the team and for her. It works both ways. It's a great move for Emma Hayes, who, for family reasons, wants to move to America, get a bit of a work-life balance, which you can do via international football a bit more than club. And then from the team's perspective, they're getting an elite coach with, I hate to say it as an Englishman, a great chance of winning <laughs> the World Cup, oh, as I America know. always do, but even more so, in my opinion, with Hayes as their coach, yeah. presuming, as we expect, that that is confirmed. Mm, yeah, I mean, absolutely. It's hard to say, right, as English people sitting it here, it is a tough one to say the fact that Emma Hayes will be moving over there and actually developing that squad the way actually it, needs, it needed that that tender love and care right for a while I think that US side so what I'm most excited about with that Emma Hayes appointment is her one-to-one -one man management I think it's absolutely incredible what she's able to do with players from youth level and the way that she's able to connect with them and bring the best out of them and give them confidence for example Jess Carter what she's done to her career Neve Charles Lauren James a prime example I'm really excited to see how Emma Hayes implements that in the US because I think she's gonna be incredible at that yeah, scary times for us as Lionesses fans, you know. <laughs> oh, you don't want it, but you know what? In Serena, we trust as well. It's going to be a good battle. It's going to be a good battle to watch. And just finally, coming back to yourselves, as you continue to shine in broadcasting and have a long-term affiliation with SoccerX, what are your personal goals? As time goes by, you become further and further from your playing days but the beauty of being broadcasters is that it has longevity you can do it <laughs> until you're 100 years of age so what are you hoping for from this current phase in your careers mm. do you know what just to continue to make change that is um, the reason why we got into the broadcasting space and it is the reason why we, we will continue to stay in it um, for us female representation is so important on screen but also being part of football business conferences and events that Soccer X offer. The reason why we wanted to join the Soccer X team is because having female representation from a business perspective is also important to us. Mm -hmm. So um, for us, it is about continuing to fly the flag and continuing to be those figureheads that we hope we have become and we hope that we will continue to become. And also just to become um, the role models that we wish we had. Yeah, absolutely. And that is so important because you know what? I hope that there's young girls watching this. I hope that there's young girls that see the content that we have produced today um, and think, do you know what? One day I'd love to do that and mm. I want to be like them. So that for me is important. Yeah, absolutely. I think the main reason for the, the Soccer X move and why we're so excited about it as well is the fact that we're able to open our own, sorry, we're open to open our own eyes up to the big world out there of business right which is so important for us to learn so that then that can filter down to young girls that we speak to because that's so important I think from a very young age especially back in the day when we were growing up you were taught if you didn't make it as a pro footballer you failed and to have that narrative told and to have that narrative uh, I suppose filtered down to you from 16 and believe that you're a failure from the age of 16 is a very, very tough pill to swallow. So I think that if we can start changing our narrative and open other females' eyes up to the fact that there are so many more opportunities within the world of sport, I think we've done our jobs. So yeah, yeah, absolutely huge opportunity for us. We're so excited for this journey of Soccer X. Great stuff. It's always a pleasure catching up. Continue to shine, keep up the good work. Thank Enjoy you. the rest of the conference. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much.